You see some? Look at them. Yeah, yeah. You gotta come in through here and dig up. Will you do that quickly? That'll be fun. So it's 8 a.m. and we are on our third uh, tomato harvest. <laughs> um, but Nona's finding shallots. She's finding potatoes. Because these are also some of the things that we tried to cultivate. There's a potato. She's finding some. What are these? I've never really done potatoes before. But what are these called? Huh? What are these called? Potatoes? They're just uh, the ones that we got, the yellow golden potatoes. Yeah. Oh, the soil is so nice. That's gorgeous. We love. First time for potatoes? First time for really being successful with the potatoes. All I right. think we should go through that bag. That's... Look, did you see these eggplant? I've been leaving these eggplant. They're gorgeous. And I've been trying to feed, feed them too. more so their color comes in. And this one. All right, but what I want to ask you, you said that this is the first time growing successful potatoes. Yeah. We have all these tomatoes, peppers, the squash, basil. What is it really about the garden, the food, the growing, and the cultivation that appeals to you? That appeals to me? The yeah. connection to the earth and knowing where my food's coming from, being part of that process. It's like primal. It's like being able to supply yourself with your nutrients and feeling that connection to the earth and the sun and the soil. Look at that. I went in with a little bucket, I think. And you have a harvesting bag, a uh, sack that someone gifted you. I know, I made it big. Look it out, look it. <laughs> if you need it. I, I think if you, uh, I don't want to get dirty from the potatoes. And the what is it? And the another the the next question I want to ask you: What yes. is it about the growing and the farming, and the martial arts study that that goes uh, together? Comes together, and how does it intersect? Because because oh, I you didn't grow up farming and growing your own vegetables, uh, and I didn't either. My mom. She grew beans. We grew Mongo chili. Beans, we grew chilies in the backyard. Yeah, so there was some. But at the retreat center, we're really connected to this sort of process. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a type of qigong, I guess. It's an energy exchange. And I think traditionally, probably people studied up in the mountains, and so you had to get kind of get your food where you were at. And it's connecting with nature. I guess I'll just leave these with you too. Um, connecting with nature and doing all that. This looks like something. Is this a flower you planted, honey? Yeah, that's a flower. Okay. That's all dead. Um, oh. What else do you think is important for people to know and understand? Maybe elaborate a little bit on that qigong aspect of gardening, farming, cultivating, and knowing where your food comes from, because that's that's key Just too. Living with the seasons too, because you're eating more seasonally when you do that. Look at that one. It's a big one. Mm hmm. Because you're doing, you're living more seasonally because you're eating what's, you know, in the, what nature is providing at the moment. Because you don't get tomatoes in the middle of winter. And so I'm really like not eating tomatoes during the times that they aren't optimal. And so, and you get to kind of like be more aware of those kinds of things because I look forward to tomato season and I look forward to apple season and I look forward to when I can have more 
eggplant and basil and things like that. And, and I'm aware. Oops, I think I'm digging up the flower. Whoops. Yeah, I think you need to go. I just need, did. I think you need to go that try, way. Try, try to put because back. you didn't you plant them all along? Yeah, the I did. Bit? I did. I did. I had a few in the. But I'm getting more. Some still here. So. I mean, I could plant that. And... What is it about when you say nature? Like, sort of define nature in the context that you're speaking of and being like connected and the seasons and then how did it sort of tie into our qigong study and practice at, on the mountain um say that again <clears throat> i'm trying to figure out how to get my potatoes from sinking back into the soil <laughs> well what is it about nature uh -huh. and maybe define it in and also think and also tie in the qigong aspect in terms of like how we studied it and uh, on the mountain well four seasons qigong got you really aware of the changes of the season and how that affects your body and you can really eat to support that the changes and the nutrients and so that really is supportive of that um yeah how do you define nature how do i define nature and anything maybe the importance that is, anything that is not man created uh nature is has like life principles that guide it like um patterns of cycling and um natural ebbs and flows of of energy of rest and rejuvenation and then expression and creation and back to rest and rejuvenation and storing so um, if we live along those principles and balancing um, our energies in the same kind of way then it's more sustainable and it, life giving, I guess. Interestingly, we've been making and we've been jarring salsa, which is kind of like a, a preservation process. Uh -huh. If you think about it, you sort of like cultivate the you you cultivate, you take a process of cultivating mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. in this case, maybe, you know, tomatoes. And then you do a storage process similar to like a Qigong session where you you circulate and and then store mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which kind of aligns with that how you how you interface with nature yeah because totally. it's not always stagnant but it's always moving totally really totally there's a little one what <laughs> there's this also there's this there's a there's a like a a prepper side of it and a, a self-sustainability side of it I as well. I say prepper. You don't think so? No, because you're not doing it because you're worried about, like, what's happening. You're doing it for the joy of, like, uh -huh. of being able to have your own source and know where they're coming from and be, like, fully involved with the quality and the nutrient content and... Freshness, you know. So, I think you. I don't know what that is. You really like to. I think those are the redwood roots coming in. No, it's probably one of the tomato or something else. You really like to get your hands in the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things I noticed about about what you find fun. It's definitely pleasing. Pleasing. Talk a little bit about the science of the putting your hands <laughs> the in the connection dirt. with this dirt. Um, I guess I'm probably really good for your connecting with the the uh, electromagnetic energy of the earth for sure. But there's just I mean, it's just I think we have sensory pathways for this, you know. It's not like, it's definitely not rocket science. 
just kind of like now like science is showing that it's great to walk in forests <laughs> like yeah, yeah well you know i don't know you don't there's some things that you don't need that level of like proof yeah you know you're just kind of like yeah just, like dan dan Se like dan siegel talks about his uh talking with uh peers and saying uh -huh. show me the proof that it's uh it it show me the proof where it's where it's uh, better to be kind to a patient i know <laughs> yeah it's definitely not necessarily you know one of the, <clears throat> one of the things that i was um yeah. one of the things i was reading recently and looking at recently was um the fact that i think zach bush was talking about how all the the funding and the research in past decades has gone to the genome project uh -huh. and looking at our genes and how it shaped our uh, mm. medical uh, establishment recently. But how he was saying if we had allocated those funds to the microbiology, yeah, that that would have really changed things. And we found like how the soil mm. is oh, is, yeah, yeah. is healthy because of the microbes in it and how it helps to feed the microflora of our own bodies when we interface with the soil. Yeah, I really had an aha moment of like human health when I watched a documentary called Symphony of Soil and um, they were talking about plants and how they're actually farming organisms in the soil for themselves, like to help them have another organism other many other organisms free up nutrients for them in the soil that they wouldn't otherwise have access to and so the health of the plant would depend on it harnessing the sunlight energy like we all study and know but it's not doing that for itself it's actually gathering that turning it into protein and carbs that it then exudes from its roots and then the microbes that benefit the plant are attracted to that and need that so there's a symbiotic relationship happening between those organisms and the plant and the plant is feeding them and in turn those organisms are giving the plant nutrients from the soil that it needs that it can't break down and it can't make bioavailable to them and it's then that colony of vibrant, robust layers of beneficial symbiotic bacteria and other microorganisms that then create this barrier around that root that makes it a healthy root. And that's its immune defense system because then bacteria and other microorganisms that would instead prey on the plant and attack it and create imbalance and non-robust living are just by the sheer multitude of the symbiotic bacteria would be phased out like there's no room like in the buildings and in the you know structures where they're they are housed for anything else so just by that there's just so much presence of the beneficial bacteria and microorganisms that the plant then has a robust immune system and then you think of it with your whole being also you have skin microbiome and uh mouth microbiome all the way down through the gut and we mostly now study about the gut microbiome and there's a lot of buzz around there but really your whole body has it and we talk about how your mammary glands have has a whole microbiome how your belly button has a microbiome how your ear has a microbiome so on um, your nasal passages so um our health we have traditionally gone through nuking microbiology and just saying they are bad we don't like them because they cause illness but really um we should be more interested in balance and cultivating the organisms that are um, beneficial to us and that provide us with nutrients and well-being and energy and health so that we just don't even need to worry about those other 
organisms that might want to um, decompose us. And those microbiomes aren't my microbes. Also, the germs, the ones that try to decompose us aren't really bad. They're actually just looking for low energy, low frequency tissues to break down and return to the earth. That's their role in nature. And so when a plant starts to decline, they are going to go back to the earth. And that's when it no longer can feed the microbiology that makes it robust. Those microbes decline also. And so in come the decomposing bacteria and it's just part of the natural cycle of life so if we are starting to decompose internally because our nutrition nutrition is bad and we're not able to feed our symbiotic microbiome really well then uh, we're just gonna have parts of us that are decomposing and those microbes are like oh you're starting to decompose i'm going to help you with that and return <laughs> you to the earth so, yeah <laughs> you know what i mean and so we're not being careful if we're not being careful what we put inside of ourselves and we don't understand it or care then we're actually not being good stewards of our own bodies and it's going to be ready to go back to the earth and we're basically slowly dying and those microbes are just helping us do that we're choosing it by our lifestyle and how we're living and how we're treating the air, how we're treating the soil, how we're treating the plants that we get nutrients from if we don't also help replenish the soil then the nutrient content of the food that we're putting inside of ourselves is low energy and low nutrient levels and by energy like minerals and things uh the composition of our body the water quality that all and the air quality that all affects our energy our energy levels and so low energy means moving towards a decline, moving towards back to Uji, back to the Tao, back to nature, and not this like outburst of a singular form of expression that's unique. That's then declining, it goes back to Uji, and then something else is going to be born out of that. So it's just a natural process, and we kind of understand that. And in order to uh, sustain our experience and our existence for as long as we can here. We just need to support the natural processes of nature and um, that's I guess how it connects to Qigong and the mountain maybe. But yeah, the very de deep connection. So now I'm getting like microbiome extensions and re you know reintroduction of different things. I'm in symbiosis with my garden so in a way what you're saying is kind of the there is a a micro ecosystem there okay. are tons of micro e ecosystems like you were saying sure. in your mouth and mm -hmm. even on your eyes and in your organs and in the gut that uh reflect the same principles in nature in the garden and it's a reciprocal process by which you not only take, but you sort of give back into uh, the soil, into the earth, and into the ecosystem for a um, the natural cyclical processes and the health of the environments, whether they're macro or micro. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely the principles that we've studied in ecology we can apply to the little worlds that are here all over the place for sure and isn't it the case too that that going back to the whole gene subject mm -hmm. that the gene, genes don't necessarily predict what's going to happen in your body because there's a whole nature versus nurture yeah they're finding argument. they're finding more and more that epigenetics is really 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 in play and important like what and epigenetics is not eugenetics which is eugenetics was like you mean eugenics <clears throat> eugenics eugenics was horrible and but epigenetics is just how your genes express depending on the environment that you create for yourself within yourself so the your stress levels and nutrient contents and status of different parts of yourself, the sleep cycle, you know, all kinds of things. 
um, and your genes, your body is responsive to that and how your genes express changes depending on, um, yeah, depending on the environment, the environment yeah. which is great because all of nature responds to the the status like and when we talk about environment that is the microbiology which can uh deplete or it could be nourished yeah it's not just the microbiology those are the organisms that are responding to it but like the sunlight the amount of sunlight between summer and um winter it changes and so the ecosystem change you know how the genes express itself in a tree or a plant changes and some trees lose their leaves and go dormant like the genes of that organism are are responding to the environment and so within our bodies mm -hmm. those factors are nutrient content and stress levels and amount of sleep and energy levels and um, whether one part of our body is injured or not and all those kinds of things. So then the, the microbiology people... and you yourself, your genes and the microbiome's genes all adapt and change and adjust and in order to help support what it is that's going on, whether that be living in life or slowing down and decomposing or getting rid of parts of yourself that is slowing down to decomposing faster so that it's shunted out because right now we have a situation we have so much toxins in our environment that parts of our body is always being overtaxed and and sloughing off and dying more so than normal because normally part of our, we, ourselves is renewed all the time we know this mm -hmm. we know that uh, there's like a chart saying like all of your cells in your da 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 da, da renew every seven years and all of this renews in like however many weeks or months or whatever so there's different parts of yourself that's renewing all the time and your food becomes who you are and the quality of those cells depends on the energy level for the integrity of those cell uh, divisions and rec and creation it depends on the material and the energy that you have the quality of those tissues plus the cleanliness of the area the situation so if you have lots of toxins in your area which a lot of our cleaning products are toxins a lot of our food is sprayed with toxins the air contains toxins fires that burn and release toxins from houses <laughs> so floods that release toxins from houses and mm. now it's in the waterways and it sinks down into the soils like our earth's trying it's best to help us with that and the way that we're living but <clears throat> we're choosing death basically humanity mm. is choosing death like by the way we're living and so bacterias and diseases and microbiomes are just gonna say okay we'll help you with that process because that's obviously what you're choosing you're choosing to go in that direction you're not choosing vitality and clean and in vibrancy so they're not our enemies they're just seeing what we're deciding and helping us along that path and doing the necessary work that it takes to return us to the earth or well at least the physical parts but um 